May the peace and mercy of God be upon each and every one of you. It was a year before 9-11, and my wife and I were standing in the Wichita, Kansas airport waiting for our baggage to come down the conveyor belt. She was standing there with her hijab and her abaya, and of course I was standing there with my rather long, unruly beard. And a gentleman across the way, oh, maybe 20 feet or 25 feet away, happened to glance over, see us, and then did a quick double take. And then he started to slowly meander around in a roundabout way, getting ever closer and closer to us, until after about four or five minutes, he was standing right next to me. And at that point, he turned to me and he said, Where are you from? And I said, well, I'm from about 35 miles north of here. No, 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 he said. I mean, where are you from originally? I said, well, I was born 30 miles north of here. Well, you could see the puzzled confusion cross his face, and he started to turn and walk away. And then you could see the light bulb going off above his head. And he turned back with sort of a triumphant look on his face, pointed at my wife and said, well, where is she from? And I said, well, she was born 40 miles north of here. (laughs) And at that, he just shook his head and walked away. I trust you see what was going on. He had correctly identified my wife and me as being Muslims. And having done that, he immediately wanted to rob us of our American identity and our American heritage. It was as though if you're a Muslim, you can't possibly be uh, an American, especially not a natural born American. Unfortunately, in America, there is an extremely prevalent myth that Muslims first arrived on the shores of America sometime in the latter half of the 20th century. This is a myth as believed by almost all non-Muslim Americans and unfortunately also believed by many Muslims who are Americans. The reality is, however, far, far different from that myth. The reality is that we Muslims have been in America all along. We Muslims were in America well before the latter half of the 20th century. We Muslims helped to tame and settle the American Wild West in the latter half of the 19th century during the era of cowboys and Indians. We Muslims fought to preserve the Union and the American Civil War between 1861 and 1865. We Muslims stood armed and ready to defend the American coastline from British invasion in the War of 1812. We Muslims fought to secure American independence from Great Britain and the American Revolutionary War beginning in 1776. We Muslims built the agricultural base of the American South before there ever was a United States of America. We Muslims explored the Americas in the 16th century with the Spanish conquistadors. We Muslims were there with Columbus in 1492 when he supposedly discovered America. And yes, we Muslims were there long before Columbus was even born. Let me give you a few examples to substantiate each one of those propositions. To begin with, let's look at Muslims in America before Columbus. And at this point, I have to acknowledge Brother Abdullah Hakim Quick, who's sitting here in the first row, who is the person who's done much of the primary research in this area. So I am indebted, Brother. Ancient Arabic sources indicate that there were at least three Muslim voyages from Muslim Andalusia to the New World. Abdul Hassan Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali al Masudi, who lived from 871 to 957, riding in the meadows of gold and quarries of jewels, 
wrote about the voyage of Kashkash ibn Sa'id ibn Aswad in the year 889, over six centuries before Columbus. According to the account, Ibn Aswad sailed west with a Muslim crew from Delba, the same port from which Columbus would later sail some six centuries later. He found a new world and returned with wealth and booty from across the Atlantic. Approximately one century later, Abu Bakr ibn Umar al Qatiyah reported that Ibn Farouk, in the year 999, sailed west across the Atlantic, landing in the Canary Islands in February of that year, and then continuing west until discovering two islands, presumably in the Caribbean, which he named Capraria and Pluitana. He returned to Spain in May of 999. And Al Idrisi, the famous Muslim cartographer and advisor to the king of Sicily, wrote in his excursions of the longing ones and crossing horizons about a group of eight Muslim sailors who sailed west from what is today Lisbon, Portugal, sailing west across the Atlantic, and they sailed for 31 days before they landed on an unknown island and were captured and held prisoner by American Indians for three days. On the fourth day, stop and think about this now, on the fourth day, a translator arrived who spoke Arabic and arranged for their release. Obviously, there had been a great deal of sustained contact, quite possibly from Muslim West Africa at that point, for an American Indian to have become fluent enough in Arabic to be have been able to serve as translator. Anyway, he arranged for their release, and they returned safely to Andalusia. But it wasn't just from Muslim Andalusia that the Muslims were in the New World long before Columbus. Sheikh Zain ad-Din Ali ibn Fadl al-Mazandarani sailed west from Tarfea, Morocco in the year 1291 and landed on a green island, again presumably in the Caribbean, and returned safely to Morocco. But perhaps the most impressive of all the Muslim voyages to the New World, which we can today document, concerned the Mandinka of West Africa. Writing in the pathways of sites in the provinces of kingdoms, Shihab ad-Din al-Umari recounted a conversation that he had with the famed Mansa Musa, who was traveling through Egypt in his famous Hajj pilgrimage. And according to Mansa Musa, a few years before, his older brother, Abu Bakari, who was then the ruler of the Mandinka Kingdom of Mali, had sent two expeditions west across the Atlantic, two fleets. This would be around the year 1310. Now when Columbus sailed in 1492, he sailed with three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. If we put the two Mandinka expeditions together, we have a combined total of 2,400 ships. A massive movement from the Mandinka of West Africa. And we know they reached America. We know that because of the linguistic evidence, if for no other reasons. There is today in South America an American Indian tribe that uses Mandinka ideograms as its form of written communication. And there is in North America an American Indian tribe located in the middle of the Atlantic seaboard, who, which back around the mid 18th century, a Moravian missionary went and studied with them and wrote a dictionary of their language. Modern linguists looking at that dictionary have discovered that many, many, many of those words are in fact Mande the language of the Mandinka Indians. And at least one Central American Indian tribe has clan names that correspond exactly 
to clan names of the Mandinka of West Africa. Yes, we Muslims were in America long before Columbus, but we were also there with Columbus. When Columbus